So I guess they're not coming, which is so bad. So today you're going to, what you're going to do is draw your mom, right? Um, when I, uh, before that, um, do you have any questions regarding uh, the comments that I posted? I mean, I'm giving you time to edit them, to make them better. Because it's one thing, uh, it's one thing to submit something because of requirement, but I want you to get better with your work. So I want you to get better with sketching and stuff. So I'm, tr I'm commenting and trying to give you some tips on how to make your works better so do you have any questions any clarifications and violent reactions even so feel free to say something guys nothing everything's clear okay so um, I'm giving you until next week to finish that. So, the Anunaman, um, what you given me, uh, what you sent me, uh, was really good. Like, for first time, it was good. And I can see the progress of your works. Uh, there are just slight changes, like most of you uh, failed or uh, forgot to put highlights so for example you have dark tone the darkest tone the medium and the highlights so I would like to see the highlights and some of you also forgot that the shadows um, the, the shadows of the bottom of the object is always the darkest so um, Yun lang naman. So others will all, only just um, darken the shadow of the object. So um, that's it. And you're done. Uh, and well done. So yeah, basic. Um, sometimes we forgot these and these are basic beginner mistakes. So no, no worries. And well done, guys. I'm glad that you learned something and <laughs> from the first that you gave me it was really good uh, for the first time. Um, so today you're going to draw a palm, right? So um, let me just share okay. my screen. Did you hear that? Yes, you're welcome. So let me just share my screen. So um, I can find a decent uh, picture of a palm. So I just took a picture of, I mentioned that pala. So I just took a picture of my palm instead, Kanina. So, um, oh. can you see my, um, screen, screen of my iPad. So this is basically my palm. So wait lang. Ah! So wait, wait, wait. So this is my palm. I'm using my iPod again and my uh, cheaper version of <laughs> an eye pencil. So um, if you have a tablet or even if you have a smartphone, you could just buy a, a cheaper one. There are a lot of cheaper alternative special and when you're a student you don't have um any income and you're dependent on your parents who who may actually have 
other people to feed like your siblings and all so um there are cheaper alternatives online that you could buy um even a rubber eraser you could do that or a rubber thingy in the hair there is um we call that um a pen a, a really a real ball point pen but there is a rubber here you could also use that as a stylus and uh, there are stylus that are worth 20 pesos i think maybe in capital and stuff but um this one the man is automatic is electrical so electronic so it naturally um connects to the ipod and has palm rejection and stuff so okay so let's begin with the um but of course you're not going to use that unless you have graphic design um you have graphic design um you need to do graphic design um i guess i'm just different because i i graduated magna cum laude and i majored in uh, painting and minor in graphic design so i had to do both <laughs> so anyway i i'm trying to tell you um trying to teach you on how to make um to draw a palm so at first you're going to why do i have this didn't play that so at first we're going to um sketch so um if we're going to use a pencil we're going to use the light the light this touch or the lightest pencil so if you could see here this is my palm it is wrinkly yes um i don't know why it's wrinkly but i guess all palms are wrinkly um i don't know let's just my palm so i can begin with a square for example so this is a square and then I could see it here, there is a circle. So I do another circle, another one here, and one big um, sausage. So imagine it is a, a breakfast. I like breakfast. You're going to draw a plate maybe for the square a sandwich and a bunch of sausages so um so if you could see here this is proportion to um the square so i made a mistake so um so we could start drawing one little hot dog there, maybe, and another hot dog here, and another hot dog here, or sausage if you want. And we could draw a chicken sausage here, and then maybe a longanisa along the way. I have no idea. Are you getting hungry, guys? It's because maybe of the the period I am getting hungry because <laughs> you know when you have a period um um electrolytes and stuff you can call it an album no oh, I like food are you getting hungry cat <laughs> I'm sorry does it bother you if I call it the sausage? So there is your basic shape of um, a hand. Um, of course, you <laughs> you like sausages too. I like sausages too. 
and I like omelets and mozzarellas, although I can't eat cheese anymore. <laughs> I cannot eat uh, processed meat that much because of doctor's orders, but I still love them. <laughs> anyway. Divide you, um, draw your basic shapes. This would be your guide shapes or guidelines to make your, ah, to make your, <laughs> wait long, I'm going to, I, um, this is going to be very, very light. And when you draw it, it is supposed to be light so that you could erase it very easily right after. So let me add a layer. So I'm adding a layer because um, it's just easier to, you know, um, delete it later, not having to think a lot about it. So um, when drawing, Oops. When drawing uh, a hand, you have to also think um, which part is which part of the hand is darker. So um, the darkest part means that you have to make the lines more bold and the lighter part of the hand you have to make it uh, less bold or less thick. For example, here. Oh. For example, here. So um, you have to also follow the, you have to also see here, for example, and not blindly follow the lines, although you could do that as well. So if you can see here, uh, I'm trying not really following the lines, but you know, this is the use of having guide shapes or basic shapes to guide you when drawing. Oops, I made a mistake. So this part should no longer. And then you have a nail here. So that should be really light. And then the dark here. And then light again. And then you have a bone here, so it's a little bit, um, it's not really wrinkly, but rough, no, not rough, bumpy. It's a little bumpy there because of the bone. And when drawing, uh, when sketching, you don't need to necessarily connect every line. So you just need to go slow. Well, I'm supposed to go fast because of the time constraints, but you get what I mean. Um, so you have to go slow. And if you could see it here, this is also a little bit darker. And the bottom is dark. This is light and then it goes dark again, for example. And then this is dark. And then this is, oh, this is lighter. Ayamnya. <laughs> oh. So the thing with, um, The thing with um, 
it's much easier when it's um what do you call this um with pencil manual because you can automatically um adjust the color you can manually adjust the thickness the boldness of the of the lines for example so it's much easier but when digital you have to manually um well my professor says it is like booking you have to manually um change the settings of the pen like that And then you have another bony structure here. And then this goes straight. So one thing I can um, suggest to you guys is that to do not um, make lines like this one. It's really bad. It makes your um it makes your uh drawing a little bit um messy and not clear so as much as possible you can um do straight lines and if you do straight lines you would also be um, making lines that are um, not so um, not so dirty, and let there will be less erasures. So it's better to do. So my hand is almost finished, almost what we are going to, um, so this is why I do, ta-da, so that is my hand. So what more can I do? I have to shade it. So I need you guys to shade your um, hand. So that you could see it's another term of it's how you're going to uh, practice your how you visualize the the colors the lightning and shadows it's a practice so you could do it with your paper stone you can slowly um do it so I suggest that you do it in a way um, very, very light and then slowly work your way up to the dark, to a darker color. So for example, this is just a mid-tone, for example, and I'm not coloring the, the dark, I mean the light part, so I am I'm specifically coloring the, the mid-tones only. And then later, I'm going to make it dark. Done with it, it's 4.35. So I don't need to do this. Um, so there, I made my mid-tones. Um, 
what I can do next is slowly build those mid-tones to be darker. See the things that I left. So this part, for example, are darker. And then this part too. Oh, I forgot the line. But if you did forgot the line, I could always just um do it with the shadow, get away with the shadow. So this is also another reason why you don't have to um um color everything and do a very very dark um lines basic lines so there and if you can see how i'm it helps when i'm when i um let's call this when i avoided the light areas so this is um what we did before was toning right and we specifically made the darker the the whole paper dark but this time what we're go what we're doing is we're starting from light and then slowly build the darker area so can you see the hand now better and then this is very forgot to So you could also um, check the mid-tones, so you have to check the mid-tones as well. And the slightest color, the change of light is very important to a picture. And also um, logically, you ha also have to think. Like, I mean, this area, there is um, this hand, I mean, this finger, the small finger that makes the shadow at the bottom. So it's naturally that this part here of the hand is darker than other parts of the hand. So there's your hand. And now, what else? We could do a very light pencil. Very small. And we could further um, put different, um, I mean, oops, too dark. We can further add more details. To the hand for example so you have to practice on this because on the future this won't be the only time that you're going to be asked to draw a hand of course, you also have your figure drawing studies. Um, if ever you have, you also have your painting studies, your techniques. So basically, I'm not following the lines here. I'm just getting the impressions. So, um, so this is your hand. So the later part comes with um i mean the details come later so basically you're trying to 
cat the 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 base color first before um, filling the details. It is also the same with painting, but with painting you have to deal with colors, with blending, with opacity, and having to um, um, having the need to control your brushes. And then what else? I'm, am I forgetting something? It's almost five. So if you are not, um, so this is your hand, right? This is the lines. If you're not very, um, if you don't like your lines, you could just erase them. For example, I find the thumb very um, lighter, lighter, right? So there's light here, so I could just delete that part. And then this part too. And then this part also. And I believe this part is also hit by the light. So I'm going to erase that. And also this one. So if you can see, even if I'm deleting, deleting, erasing, <laughs> erasing the, 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 the lines, you could still make up the, the figure of the hand. So, okay, even this one. So, okay, it's done. Oh, wait. Then if you have any, um, if you made any um, wrongs or mistakes with the coloring, you could also delete it. I mean, erase it. Oops, too much. So again, let's, let's go back to the technique. So, yeah. Okay guys, is that clear? It's also the same with what you're going to do on a pencil. Basically, it's the same principle. I just did it digitally. So, Guys, is that clear? So that is what I mean by, or shadows pala. I forgot about the shadows as well. So see, even I forget the shadows. So um, basically shadow of the hand is much more darker than, than Then the rest of the hand. So basically, this is just a shadow, for example, like that. And so here. So, I am done. And then don't forget to sign your name. So, so there, that's my hand. So do you think you could do what I wanted you to do? Yes, Vigil. Ma'am, how about, um, so reference photo ko po kasi, yung Parang shadow po sa mismo hand is darker than the shadow sa a foreshadow. Is it okay na ganun? Ano yun? The um, shadow? Yung shadow po mismo sa, sa kamay ko po. Uh -huh. Is iba, iba siya sa like sa shadow na 
na form ng kamay ko. I mean, mas lighter yung shadow ng kamay ko. <laughs> gets you po. Di ko, di ko pa rin gets. Like, uh, example the... po sa drawing nyo po. Uh, uh, yung mga shadow po sa kamay po, mm-hmm. uh, mas darker po siya sa mismong shadow ng kamay. <laughs> What? Ang ang shadow sa kamay mas darker sa shadow sa kamay? Opo, yung shadow po, example po yung finger po, yung finger po na may shadow po siya sa mismong finger. Okay, <laughs> may shadow sa mismong finger. Opo, like, tingnan, ah, sa, sa, sa ano na lang po, sa reference photo nyo na lang po. Bale po yung middle finger nyo po, di ba may shadow siya sa point finger nyo po? Mm-hmm. So yun po mas dark po siya sa ano sa yung shadow sa likod ng kamay niyo po. Okay lang po 'yan. Ah, yeah, yeah. Yes, yes. That's ah, okay. okay. Kasi po kasi na indicate niyo na yung shadow po yung pinaka dark. So, so usually um as a law as a, as a principle, the cast shadow yun yung nasa likod ng kamay is usually yeah, yeah. but It is different when the shadow, when something is floating on air. When um, the object, for example, this is a table and this is the object, the shadow, the cast shadow, for example, here is the light, the shadow is here. So the cast shadow is usually darker when the object is directly um, on top of another object. But if the object is, for example, floating on air and the light is much more closer than um, what is on the ground or, or, or on what it is resting on, then um, the shadow, the cast shadow is usually lighter and there is more contrast of the shadow um, that is Uh, closer to uh, the light source, especially if, because um, when the object is near the light source, um, usually it, it it would evoke very very strong exposure to the light, which means no halos no shadow at all, or um, if the uh, object is wrinkly, for example. And it it is not that smooth. Then the object will have a um, very strong cast, a uh, very strong core shadows. Do you get it? Yes, ma'am. Thank you, Paul. Okay. So, any more questions? Guys, no more questions. questions okay so i'm going to dismiss you to um okay. i'm going to dismiss you so that you could work on your um yeah, palm, palm palm plate, palm plate. <laughs> <laughs> all right Yes, Vairo. Ma'am, I actually have a concern regarding po sa pag-blend. Because sometimes po, ma'am, pag nag-blend po sa graphite, nagpa-patchy-patchy po siya. Ano pong pwedeng maging technique para hindi po maging ganun? So, when your graphite is having patchy-patchy, <laughs> it means that your your graphite pencil is not of a very good quality or that you could use also a smooth surface so um for example in a watercolor paper you could use um on the watercolor paper the the smooth part the 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 front part of the paper is usually rough and the back is the smooth so you could use the smooth part So that's one thing. And then another thing is use a cotton or a brush to smudge it off. 
or um, you could also use, you could um, repair a pigment. So uh, you could parang carve, carve ba yun? Yung parang tatanggalin, gagawin mong powder. Ah, yeah. You're going to make the, uh, you're going to get a powder from the pencil. Then, and then you could transfer it using uh, a paper stamp, a brush, or uh, what else? Cotton buds, paper stamp, your finger. So um, that is one technique. To, mm -hmm. So it when um when blending when you say blending, it doesn't mean that you're going to direct to um directly directly uh, write or yeah um write the graphite on the paper directly and blend it you could also um get the pigments from the pencil and then um blend it or and then transfer it so blending here is um a technique on whether or it, it is referring to when you are um, trying to uh, make a gradient of the color of the um, of the pigment so blending is not the actual blending or mixing it's called mixing <laughs> but rather it's having to uh, uh, use or make up a, a gradient out of the pigment. Yung gradient, when I say gradient, it is from it's really light to dark or from when, it, when you say color, it's from yellow to orange or red to green and other things. Okay? Okay, you get okay. Yes, so other questions? None? Okay, so you have a few minutes and you have until Friday Panaman or next week. Let's have it until next week to um to uh, for you to submit your works. All right? All right, guys. So on 20, ma'am, we will have a new lesson. Na po. Are we going to meet on 20? Po? Oh, nga po. Next kasi is on 20. Na po. 20, 20. Yes. We're going to have the lecture on values. Ay, hindi pa. You have 13, right? At today's 13. And then on 15, on Friday, you're going to um, have another exercise, which is animal fur. And then I'm going to skip the water part since you already did the glass and water. Um, and then... On 20, we're going to have a lecture on values. All right? Okay, ma'am, noted. Okay, so good luck, guys. Ah, Kat. Um, so, so ma'am, for the water exercise, we're gonna disregard it since we already did the glass and, yeah, Kidneys. like that. One more. Yes. Kiss uh -huh. mama. <laughs> Kiss mama. <laughs> okay. Um, I, okay, Diana. <laughs> yes. Diana, you wrote raise your hand. Yeah, po. Um, question po about your needed eraser. Po. When to use it for? Like, uh, uh, best way to use for your eraser. In what? Uh, you did eraser, but like, some push must like 
bagay gamitin ko. Um, you could actually use it anywhere. Um, you could use it, pero most of the artists prefer to use it. Kasi you can um, make it softer. You So, sorry, makate. <laughs> um, you could use it anywhere, basically. So, the kneaded eraser, you could use it on the lead, um, even a charcoal. It's the preferred uh, eraser and also on an oil pastel or soft pastel. Ah, soft pastel, not oil. Soft pastels, you could also do that. Because the thing with kneaded eraser is that you could form it into a uh, like clay. I don't know where my kneaded eraser is, but I think I have it here. So you could mold it into really, really small tip. And you could also mold it into a big one. So unlike the rubber eraser, when you erase it totally there, it would leave a mess. Like, I don't, I forgot what you call it, but it would definitely need a mess. And that itself is bad. And, and when you erase it, the chances are that it would erase most of the pigment. And for, but in kneaded eraser, you could just erase, for example, half of the lead or just, or make the color of the pigment, for example, just a little bit transparent or ganun. So parang binabawasan mo yung pigment sa paper. So that's why um, most artists prefer to use the kneaded eraser because they can control, they can control the lead and it is also more advanced, more, gives more advantage because with a rubber eraser, it is hard surface. It has had hard surface. So when you erase it, the paper have more chance to get damaged or get ripped off. But since the kneaded eraser is a little bit softer, um, it is not that it is it 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 is it seldom can um although it can it could also rub the whole entire paper off but it seldom can because it's a little bit rubbery than the rubber eraser so um that's why kneaded eraser is well the preferred choice of most artists but if you don't like the 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 kneaded eraser, then you could also use the rubber eraser. Nobody is forcing you to use the kneaded eraser, okay? But um, I'm just saying that the kneaded eraser is the preferred. And also you have a mechanical eraser huh? and the electrical one. Uh, both, all kinds of erasers um, gives out a, parang a dust kind of thingy. But except for the needed eraser that actually absorbs the pigment itself rather than um, rubbing it away. And ayun. so do you understand? Did I answer your question? Did I answer your question? I didn't quite get that. Okay, so do you have cut? So basically for for the needed eraser it's it's ano parang useful po talaga siya when it comes to highlights right kasi when you erase it parang you can see the clear side of the the drawing something like that No you could also use a a mechanical eraser or an electrical eraser or even a a rubber eraser when using highlights Yung downside lang ng ano, rubber eraser is that it gets um, 
when you erase it for very long, it won't get um, sharp or pointy enough. Oh, so that's yeah. Why, that's why artists prefer the kneaded eraser because you could knead it. Hence, kneaded. You can knead it into the pointy thingy and that's how you get the highlights and all. But um, in terms of cleanliness, I mean, if you want to like erase something really, really good, like as in walang matera na eraser, um, use the rubber one. But if you want, oh, okay. but if you want to um, erase something uh, in terms that you just want the pigment or the color to tone a little bit or if you just want the eraser to um to erase something a little and have the pigment still there for example you could use the kneaded eraser but if you want something to actually clean everything like make it white again use the rubber eraser but um the disadvantage with the rubber eraser that is that um, it tends to be messy. I don't like messy. So oh, yeah, because you could still see the dirt part and it's really hard to erase. So when you erase it, there is dust or the thing that comes out of the rubber. So you could still see that. So um, when you're using powdered pigment, the pigment could blow or could go you know go to the air and stuff so and then it will stick here and stuff so um it can get a little bit messy when using rubber eraser well that's just for me but um there are also other techniques that could um use rubber eraser or um make your uh work clean more clean so that's for you to find out. And maybe next time I'm going to discuss it. All, All right. right, Ma. All right, Ma. Thank you, Ma. Okay, so um, time to you to work on your palm drawing or, or have you started yet? <laughs> so, uh, okay, um, you have 30 minutes already. <laughs> and also until friday and next week so um you have time today and then next week all right yes kat um one last question because regarding the palm diba we have to like put some shadows and then after like drawing the whole drawing itself we're gonna put our, our names right you have to sign when you're when you're making an artwork you have to sign every time your name if you don't want other people to copy or um or get your work without permission so Ooh. every a work you have to sign it that's a rule especially when when in class uh, especially in face-to-face -face classes because um, those works could be mixed up. So it's better to train you now to sign your works before everything becomes, you know, messy and someone might steal your work. So, so it's just a habit that you have to uh, form. All right? All right, Mama. Thank you, Mama. Okay, so class dismiss and uh, please work on your plate. All right, I hope that made things easier for you to draw. So bye bye, guys. Bye, ma'am. Bye, pa, ma'am. Bye. Bye, ma'am. Okay.